Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are so thankful to God that two more days to go. What an awesome time in the presence of God. Each and every day was unique. Each and every day God has ministered to us differently and specially. And we are so thankful to God for what he's doing. And today again we are in the house of prayer still flowing as the river and the waves are taking us in this direction. Amen. I want to say thank you so much to my bishop for allowing me to lead the meeting today. Thank you so much. So we know uh, as we started with the bishop talking about the future is bright. Um, the bishop uh, covered the point number one on Monday. Pastor Pilani did yesterday. And today I will touch point number three. Are we together? I love point number three especially. And I thank God for giving me point number three because I have like a connection with point number three. Amen. So I thank God that Pastor Pilani took point number two. So uh, point number three, as the bishop was sharing the word with us, he said that God's word in our mouth is very potent. Hallelujah. God's word in our mouth is very potent. And that connects me with the scripture that says, Power of life and death is under our tongue. So with our tongue, we can either release life or we will release death. And the scripture that we've been reading, if you can post it for me in Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. The man of God... Ezekiel prophesying, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of, in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy. Can you tell your neighbor, prophesy? prophesy. I want you to say it this time with a little bit of an attitude, prophesy. prophesy. So we see that. Ezekiel was led in a place where the scripture says, the valley where the bones were very dry. Not only dry, but there is an emphasis saying that they were very, very dry. So to make the situation worse. But God did not look at how it was very dry, but he said to the man of God, you have the power in your mouth to declare something. He did not tell him, go and find this or this and that. But he said to the man of God, open your mouth and do something. And he told the man of God, prophesy to these bones and say to them. And tonight, we will be prophesying to situation, commanding them what we want them to be. Because if I am in a crisis, it's okay. But in order for me to go out of that crisis, I have to put in my mouth words that align with the picture that I want to see about that situation. Hallelujah. Then, the, the, can you please keep the scripture? So he said that prophesy to these bones and say to them, say something. Don't just look at the situation and be sad. Don't just look at the situation and be depressed. You have power to bring life in that situation. If this was applied at Ezekiel's time, it is also applied in our lives. So the future is bright. It's not up to God to come supernaturally and change it. God is saying that the future is bright. You have power within you. Power and death is under the, 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 the power of our tongues. And he said, say to them. 
dry bones, hear the word of And in our situations today, we will not speak our wish. We will not speak our dreams. We're going to speak that says the Lord. That's why as I'm talking to you, I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance any promise that you have ever memorized. Even if you don't know it all together, just paraphrase it. It is yours. And as I'm talking to you, as we prophesying as Ezekiel did, I pray that the Holy Spirit will remind you of a scripture or a prophetic word that was being, has been spoken over your life. Today, you are standing and say, I'm speaking to the situation, the desired result. I've given you this testimony, maybe my husband or me. Because my husband always said that better speak about your testimony before people start talking. But say, but yeah, I said it already. It's my life. I know where the Lord took me. So the situation was very good, you know, at that time. As God was journeying with us to lead us to the place where we are today. And I want to tell somebody, God has a bright future for you. But that bright future will not happen miraculously. God must take you one step at a time, one step at a time. Why is God going to take you in those things that you will go through? Because God is not really um, in a crisis of wiping your tears. God is in a process of creating a person who will be able to respect and appreciate what God will do in their lives. That's why when God will take you from one place to the other, though you have a desired future, God said that fix your eyes there. But as for you and me, let us walk one step at a time. And as God takes you, whatever crisis that you're going through, as God takes you into those times, I want you to remember what Peter says. These trials that you go through, they are your brothers are going through the same. So it's good. Don't ever say, I want to go out of it. Just stay there. God knows what he's doing. And as we were going through that time, it was very tough. Food was a problem, everything. And then my husband and I and our children, we will stand with them and start declaring more in our morning prayer and in our evening prayer. The storehouse will never be empty. Hallelujah. When the storehouse was completely empty. When the children after that prayer, they will go to school without lunchbox. But you are telling them, and maybe, I don't know, they've never said it. Maybe among themselves they said they must be crazy, these people. In the morning and in the evening, we will declare with them, the storehouse will never be empty. In the evening, the storehouse will never be empty. The next day, the storehouse will never be empty. Oh, if you ask me and my husband, or you ask our children, how does the storehouse get full? I will not tell you. But what I know, as we were prophesying, God was working something in his way of working things. Hallelujah. And between my husband and I, uh, somebody gave us this book. And when we have our time to pray, we're going to hold our hand together like this. And we start declaring, I will never be broke another day in my life. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Because it is an experience that we went through. And then we will declare, at that time, I don't even have one rent. At that time, I don't even know what we will do. But we will stand, my husband and I. We will never be broke another day in our lives. We will never be broke another day in our lives. Were we crazy? No. We were calling the future coming to us. We were calling the future coming to us. Am I broke? I, may, I might not be a millionaire, but am I broke? I'm not. If I open my purse, 100 rents can be in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is it that we did? We saw our situation. 
And we understood that in order for us to come out of this situation, we must take responsibility. And that first responsibility is to acknowledge the situation. You cannot deny it. The situation is there. As you acknowledge the situation, then you take the word of God and apply to the situation. How long did it take? I cannot remember. But what I know now as I'm talking to you, the word created. Because the, the, the man of God told us that the word of God in our mouth is very potent. And God said to Ezekiel, son of man, prophesy and say to them, this is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. I want us to read um, uh, um, Isaiah 55 from 10 to 11. And they were very dry, not just dry, very dry. They did not pour water on them. Angel did not sing around them. Um, they did not pour oil on them, but they said, you have something within you. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish. So that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. So is the word that goes out of the mouth of God. So is the word that goes out of the mouth of God. You know what? When Jesus Christ, keep the scripture, when Jesus Christ was taken in the wilderness by the devil, which weapon did Jesus use? It is written. <laughs> I love it. He did not say anything. He just said it is written. So the power of it is written is in your hand and it is in your mouth. As we're finishing this fasting and praying, you will not say contrary to your situation. You will speak what the word of God says. It is written. If you are sick in your bodies and the symptoms are showing whatever they know how to show, you tell them it is written. Hallelujah. As after you prayed and you really had such expectation and you see the opposite, I want you to stay. It is written. What is it that is happening? God is calling us in partnership with him because he created us according to his image and likeness. So he's not creating anymore. He has given us that power by the Holy Spirit to create. So let us take advantage of that power. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Hallelujah. It will not return to God empty. If God has said it, surely it shall come to pass according to Isaiah. When God releases his word, he's big enough to not change his mind. Let us give God the honor and the respect that is due to him. We can change our mind. We can change and say, I forgot or whatever it is. Oh, situation has changed. I cannot help you according to the way that I promised. But as for God, when he says it, he's big enough, he's mighty enough, he's wise enough, he's great enough to accomplish it. The bishop spoke to us about Sarah and Abraham. 89, Sarah, 99, Abraham. Humanly speaking, impossible. Nonsense, yes, Bishop. But divinely speaking, possible. Humanly speaking, according to the doctor's report, According to how the body functions, according to my studies and my experience, it tells me impossible. Mission impossible. But when I look intently into the divine wisdom of God, which is his word, he's telling me, son of man, prophesy. 
when I look into the wisdom of God, when I tap into the grace of God, when I tap into the mercy of God, he is telling me, prophesy, say what you want, and it will be done exactly like that. Therefore, the word of God will not return to my God empty. Unless you want it to return empty, but as for him, he said, no, I don't need it, it's yours. Let it create. But it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I did what? What is it that God said in your life? God want, to, want that desire to be accomplished and you want to achieve that purpose in your life. The enemy, what he does in different ways and forms is to distort the image of God in our heart. And he can use very good things. And as we align ourselves with those, he's happy because we will not speak what God wants us to speak anymore. We start speaking what the world is saying about situations. And we'll discuss with my husband time and, time and again in the, on the issue of faith. And then the question that we ask ourselves is, Jesus is God. And if he allowed that in the Bible be written that I don't know when I return is if I will find faith. It's, it's a question mark. It's really a question mark. Do we really believe that what God says will come to pass? Even now that we have gone through the, the, the sacrifice of fasting and praying, do we really believe that as a man of God stood and declared it, so it is God speaking to us? As for me and my household, we we'll believe that God will do what he has purpose to do. Amen. Amen. So, Read with us something. Let us go in the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The future is bright because this is the thought of God towards you. The future is bright because God Almighty has something in mind for you. And he said that this is how I see you. And when he was speaking to the people of Israel at this time, they were in captivity. But he did not care about their captivity. He did not see them in bondage. And I want to declare to somebody today, God doesn't see you in that situation. God doesn't see you with that disease. God doesn't see you with that oppression and depression. God doesn't see you with that addiction. But when God sees you, he sees the man and the woman that he needed to get according to his wisdom. And he has released you in this world to be his true, his, his true representative. And he said, he went and told them. Many, many things you can read for yourself for the sake of time. I want us to pray. And then when you reach this place and say... Huh. I know, and we know that he cannot lie. I know the plans that I have for you. And those plans are not ordinary plans. It might be tough in the bondage and captivity where you are right now. You can be in a space of despair right now. You can be in a place you don't know how I will go out of this place. But God is saying that I know the plans that I have for you. And that plan that he has declares the Lord, God Almighty, who is giving us a bright future, is telling you and I that he want to prosper us. And if you have been in this church too long, you will know that the bishop have taught us that prosperity is just that I've been in this place, but I've moved into another sphere. Hallelujah. I've been in this place financially, relationally, or otherwise. But I'm not there anymore. I'm here. You have prospered. And God is saying that I want to take you from where you are because I'm seeing you somewhere else. And that is the place that God is leading us to prosper us in the spiritual realm, to prosper us in our emotional side, to prosper us physically, relationally, and otherwise. I know the plans that I have for you, my children. I know the plans that I have for you, Rama. And that plan, I will not harm you. 
I'm not an evil one. I'm a good one. I will not harm you. But the plan that I have is to do what? I want to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. A hope and a future. This is what God wants to give us. And when the bishop proclaim on this stage and say, a bright future, it is in the mind of God. So we are aligning ourselves with this prophetic word. What area is it exactly where you are struggling? The word of God is potent in our mouths. So the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 1, from 1 going down, that, uh, that, that God Almighty Years back, he spoke to us through prophets. He spoke to us through uh, uh, our forefathers. But in these last days, he chose to speak to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is the word that upholds everything. Everything, everything is being upheld. Holded by the power of the spoken word of God. God in his infinite greatness, in his sovereignty, I'm trying to figure out with my finite mind, I cannot comprehend how somebody can come from nothing and make something. But being in that sphere, God said, let it be without effort because he spoke, it came to pass. And that very same power lives in you and me. What we need to do is just to step up by faith and start prophesying and declaring and declaring. I've made an end to speak negatively. And whenever you speak negatively, if you are too close, I will rebuke straight away. But if you are not, I will speak it differently in a positive way. Why? Because I know I don't just carry me. I carry the very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm not just filled with me. I'm filled with the fullness of the word of God. And as I'm being squeezed, I don't want to speak something that is not in me. What is in me is the word of God. I will not deny my reality, but I will oblige my reality to align with the truth. Amen. Amen. In these last days, are we in the last days? He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed her over all things, and through him he made the universe. Let's, let's go. Three. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Sustaining. Oh, can somebody help me say this word? Doing what? Can you please do it like you are preaching now to me? Doing what? Sustaining. Hmm. You know, we are being sustained by this ground on which we stand. And we are standing confidently as I'm moving up and down because I'm sure it will not let me down. But if I'm being sustained by something that is not sure, if I know that this chair doesn't have four legs, it has three. I will not come and sit like this. Though I want to sit, I will sit like this. Am I being sustained? No. Because I'm insecure. I'm not at peace. I'm not sure if I have to rest or not. So I will not be comfortable in this place. But the word of God sustained me. By day or by night, I'm being sustained. The heaven stands because God spoke. The sea stopped because God says so. Hallelujah. The mountain still standing because God says so. Hallelujah. You and I are alive because God breathed in us and we became human beings. And that is the word of God. And that very same word is in your mouth. It is in my mouth. What we need to do is, can you prophesy? Can we prophesy? Do you have any prophetic word in your life? If you have it, and if I have it, this is the time that we need to prophesy. You will not only prophesy today and forget tomorrow. You will continue. I will never be broken another day in my life. Uh -huh. I will never be broken another day in my life. Even if I don't have, but I might have 10 rent. <laughs> Even if I really don't have, I will have food on my table. Why the storehouse will never be empty. Hallelujah. It all starts with a word. 
And when you hold that word dear to you, and you keep it in a good ground, you like it or not, that seed will grow and fruit will be seen because it is the word of God. We are standing on this place, not because God says, I've built already. God says, go and do. It was just a word. And the word has been made flesh. Let us stand on our feet. The word of God in our mouth is very potent. Very, very, very potent. And today... We, ju- we, we have just one prayer request. Just one prayer request. You know your situation. You know your struggles and everything. Remember any prophetic that you know. Any promise from the scripture that you know. Start 